Welcome, everybody, to Pitch Light Chronicles. I am Tess. I am here with Donald and Rob. And the Yankees just really laid an egg this weekend, you know, on Easter weekend. So today they stink. Game, so it was they another game they, they kind of beat themselves. Uh, and the offense just continued to just go stagnant. And uh, it's a rinse and repeat mentality. Yeah, we, we were supposed to be watching a new team. We we're supposed to be watching the same team as last year, but with enough minor improvements to avoid games like we saw this weekend. What do you mean same team as last year? Same team as last year is a bad thing. The team absolutely stunk last year. This is the same team this year. It's going to stink this year too. Well, it's the fact that you keep seeing Glaber at shortstop. Stop doing that. Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Because it's not helping. Now his play at, at shortstop, where you know he could, you know, he pulled Rizzo off the bag, that did not cost us the game. But what it did was it gave, it, it gave Baltimore a window, and they were able to get through that window, where they felt like you know they were they they were able to say, "I right, we got in their heads. Let's just now now let's go for the kill." Baltimore, are a minor league team, man. There's no way you should be losing any games to this Baltimore team. It's a minor league team. Oh, Dor is playing for them. He was actually a pinch hitter. <laughs> sure he, how about this stat? Oh, Dor with that one single, right? That those, that two RBI single, right? Yep. He now has more RBIs than Falafe, than Higashioka, than Joey Gallo, and Aaron Judge combined. Come. Fine. He's got more RBIs than them combined without one hit. I mean, that tells you everything about this offense. This offense is broken, man. I mean, we know Aaron Judge is going to come around. We don't know about Joey Gallo because he's been broken since he's got here. And uh, and this is what you get when you ride it out with two defensive only guys at the bottom of the order. It's like a National League team we've sent out. We've sent out a National League team before the DH is what we've sent out, and we're, we're seeing the results. If you saw the lineup yesterday, if anyone actually thought this was going to win any games, uh, um, then, you know, you, you're kidding yourselves. I mean, well, we had Castro, we had Nikashioka, we had, I mean, Falafi, you, what are you going to get out of that? man? So we got what we deserve. Aaron Judge and his goddamn line. Uh, Aaron Judge, Aaron Boone and his goddamn lineups again. I mean, what are you doing with all these r- rotating on a daily basis, man? I mean, it's, now it's just it has, stupid. Now it it's has, just stupid. But he has no choice. This is the roster Cashman gave him to work with. That, and you even said that. Yeah. You know, and right. It's almost like to start the season until they figure out a formula where this can work. Boone almost gets a pass. You know, yeah. and almost gets. I'm not giving him a complete. No, you're right. Yeah. You know, he's done very well with the bullpen moves, you know, and the only thing is, is you're starting to see that a lot of these, they're, where they're trying to use them, in the, the new term to make it sound better is they're putting them in different lanes. You know, we're in the lane, we're turning the corner, enough with these analogies, just win games. You know, put your best out, out you know, put your best team out there. Just, you know, because what's frustrating is, we started the season with winning the series against Boston. We split the series against Toronto. We're feeling really good. All right, Baltimore's coming. Now, here's our chance to kind of get a jump ahead. We went into last night's, you know, yesterday's game tied for first place. And then we got what we got. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's yeah, not that's... really a surprise, though, man. Let's, let's be honest. Like, uh, our offense has been historically putrid to start this to start this year. For the first yeah. nine, ten games, we were one of the worst offenses we've ever had um, in big Bronx bomber history. This is absolutely putrid. So we're actually lucky to be where we're at. Because I mean, in team- reality, with all the times that we've we've relied on our pitching completely solely, um, otherwise, we could be, you know, we could only have like two wins by now or one. We're lucky. We've not actually played particularly well offensively in any games. I mean, the bet, maybe the first game was okay. Uh, but that, but again, I had to go to extra innings. Apart from that, we've really had nothing offensively apart from that one inning after the rain delay against Baltimore. Otherwise, we could have been shut out in that game too. 
So uh, I, I think there's real serious problems, and I want to pass this off to Rob. What do you think about this, man? No, I'm not happy. Look, you can't you can't lose two out of three to Baltimore in that fashion. You can't get shut out twice. And um, I mean, we're we're 28th in runs scored. We had the second most outs on the bases. Ten double plays already. Uh, I really hope you don't hear the landscapers out there. And we we're hitting 190 with runners in scoring position. I, I mean, we're one of the worst offenses in baseball right now. Will it turn around? Probably. You know, there's too much talent on the in the lineup on a normal day that we will see pro, we'll see production. But you shouldn't be losing to Baltimore. I don't care what month it is. You should not be losing to these guys. They sent Bruce Zimmerman out there yesterday, and we couldn't hit him at all. Like it, it's it's frustrating to see it. You know, when when you have these different lineups every single day. And one thing with Boone is why can't Trevino play two days in a row? Why couldn't he play yesterday? We have an off day today. You know Higgy's starting tomorrow because Cole has to have his guy. The $34 million crybaby has to have his catcher. And we can't we can't have Trevino start two games in a row on, after he gets two hits. He's been our best hitter when he's in the lineup. and He's a backup catcher, and yet they're sitting him. The only move that I can really agree with is having Aaron Hicks lead off two days in a row because he's been really good so far. So you ride the hot hand until he eventually craps out. But, like, what are we doing? Like, did Marcus Timms keep – did he keep his job? Because this is the exact same thing we saw last year. I thought we were getting a new hitting coach. We we're the same, same freaking team as last year so far. A lot will change. It will change. It's 10 games. But it, for this to be the case, again, where we can't beat Baltimore and look lifeless, it's frustrating. But my only, my only thing I challenge there is how much better is this offense going to get? I mean, let's just look at it, right? Who are we expecting going to have a really good year? DJ LeMahieu. Well, he's already off to a decent start. Aaron Judge will come around. Okay, there's no doubt about that. He will. I think uh, Brian Cashman has, has set him up to fail with this contract negotiation failure right on the eve of the, uh, of the start of the season. That's gone in his head. You have to be a robot otherwise for it not to affect him. So, right, we'll put that aside. Judge will come around. Stanton is already off to a decent start. He's he's going to rake all year, right? Don't have any doubt about that. Okay. Donaldson is what he is. Gallo is what he is. I mean, Don Donaldson bat 240 last year, 220 the year before. How much better is he going to really be? Uh, Joey Gallo has been broken all well, well, since we acquired him. And to be honest, he's, and he's not entirely – he's not the kind of player we need anyway. So he's not really going to be that – Great for us. I can be sure of that. And then we move down to uh, Higashioka. He's not going to hit at all. Um, Falafe isn't going to hit much. Um, uh, you, you, and Aaron Hicks, I mean, he's been bad for four years. He's been good for 10 days. He's been bad for four years. So he, he's probably going to go on a downturn. So if you look at it, how much better is this offense actually going to be? I would actually challenge that and say, it's actually not a very well put together uh, lineup. And then we get to Glaber Torres. And he's been the Yankees have turned him into Gary Sanchez. He's kind of like he's kind of like a guy in his own head, and he's and his uh, he's on a he's on a downturn, man. And I don't know how he's going to get out of that. So uh, there's real serious problems, and they have to rotate him anyway with DJ LeMahieu. So the way I look at it, I actually don't think this lineup is very good. Uh, it's like there's four or five very good hitters, and then the rest is like oh, yikes, yeah. So I mean, what would you, what, what would you say to that? I would go back to what Jack Curry said during the rain delay. These guys got to get back to the basics because what works for them? And look what happened after the rain delay. We just went back to basic swings. Like everything that our new hitting coach, whatever the hell his name is, I keep forgetting his name, but he said just hit strikes. Like that was his, that was his approach, right? Which just hit the ball hard, hit strikes. We're doing the same thing we did last year. Uppercut swings, swinging out of the zones, bad, just looking bad at the plate. Like, remember the first couple of games, they were taking pitches, and even though we were not scoring a ton, they were putting together good at-bats yeah. that you knew they were close. And to be fair to something that Aaron Boone has said, he keeps saying, we're close, we're close. We have been very unlucky with these hard-hit balls going yeah. right to the defense, but those have stopped the last couple of days. Like, you know, yeah. when you get shut out twice by the Orioles, that means that you're not having good at-bats. And to Go ahead. I don't know. There's just a... No, I was just going to say, go back to the basics. Like, Joey Gallo, you know what he is. He's going to hit probably 210. But if he's going to – when he's seeing the ball, he's going to hit 40 home runs in that in Yankee Stadium. So, 
I don't know if they're trying to change him. Because that's what it seems like. It seems like they're trying to change him. Hey, be more of a gap hitter. Try to get your average up. We know what Joey Gallo is. Stop trying to change the player. You got him for a reason, right, Hal Steinbrenner? You said you got to do whatever it takes to go get Joey Gallo. Well, you got Joey Gallo, and now you're trying to change him. So I don't blame a lot of these players. I blame a lot of this on the front office. This is why we were all very, very critical of what we have running the organization. I can't hate the players except for Rollis Chapman because he's a piece of garbage. But – the rest of this roster, I'm not going to root against them to fail. Yeah. But this is a team that we were given by our front office, I'm going to root for these guys every single night, but I cannot support the, the, the top. I cannot support the guys that put this team together. We knew what we were getting into once they brought back Aaron Boone. It's like, well, they're not going to change this roster too much because they clearly they like what they see already for whatever reason. So that's why I'm not – while I'm angry, I'm not surprised because, like, we knew what we were getting ourselves into when they brought back Boone for four more years. <laughs> it's like you could change all the coaches you want around him. Not every some, not every single person you bring in is going to be the next Matt Blake, who's probably the only bright spot we have on this coaching staff, and our pitching is the only bright spot on this team. Nestor Cortez, that damn mustache brings him luck. I don't know what it is, it's, but it is frustrating watching all these bats just struggle against Baltimore. Of all well, the key to that is the off- is their um, front office strategy in terms of offense. And that's why there's no change between Marcus Timms and uh, the new hitting coaches because it's actually nothing to do with Marcus Timms. Marcus Timms has got the short end of the stick, man. He got the blame for what this front office um, philosophy is in terms of offense. They want uppercut swings. They want, they're actually happy with strikeouts because it's all in line with analytics. And uh, uh, we're going to get into this debate again, but I mean, that's the way the Yankees have run their organization is analytics. Every, everything is analytics. Everything is data driven 100%. And uh, that's their organizational philosophy in terms of offense. And so everybody is going up there with the same approach. So Labor Torres, who is a line drive hitter, is still trying these uppercut swings. He's still trying to hit it out of the park every single at bat. Higashi Yoka, you know, I mean, listen, he's not a very good hitter, but I'll tell you, you could probably get him to be uh, just below average if you could just, if you get him to start making contact. But again, it's all about uppercut swings, uppercut swings. Everyone has to have an uppercut swing. And that is why you're seeing all these crazily terrible batting averages and the fact that we're awful runners in scoring position because everyone's got the same approach. And so Marcus Timms, got the blame from Yankee fans and it was nothing to do with Marcus Timms. It's all from the top, man. It didn't mean that he was a bad, bad batting coach. It just means that it was all from the top. I mean, that, that, so they brought up somebody from, from the minor leagues so that he could just take everything from the analytics department. And nothing's going to change, man, because it all comes from Brian Cashman. So uh, luckily, Blake is just a very good pitching mind and he's got a really good pitching department and they're doing a fantastic job but it's not going to tra- translate offensively because the Yankees are so locked into the three true outcomes and that's why this is a boring station to station analytically cynically put together uh, offense and uh, that's why I actually don't think it's going to get that much better I mean obviously it will improve slightly and you're going to win games and stuff but in general this is probably going to be your offense uh, the one thing I, I was starting to say earlier, to, to not really, you know, really just completely take a crap on the offense. The one thing that we're seeing more than we've ever seen since, you know, forever is you're seeing more hit and runs. You're seeing bunting a lot more. You know, you, 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 they're trying to play a little, bring a little bit of small ball back to throw off the defense. You know, and kind of screw with their, you know, how they're aligning, the, how they're aligning the defense. You know, bunting against the shift. You know, Glaber seeing that they were all playing back, so he bunched yesterday to move the runner over rather than hitting to a double play, which they've already hit into double digits and they have more double plays. I think there's only one team that may have more than them already. You know, so here it is, another year of the same. That's what I'm saying. It's the same team as last year, not the same roster, but the same team mentality. You know, we're just, it's, like Don said, it's that 3-2 outcome. It's not working. It's not going to work. It never will work. And Amen. they really, is it, 
are they having that much trouble shifting from the previous hitting coach to the current hitting coach? Is it that much? Are they having that much trouble? Are they, you know, or are they professional hitters that can make adjustments on the fly? You know, that's what we need to start saying. I mean, it goes back to what Donald just said and something that we've been complaining about for over a year now is it comes from the top. This is what they want. Because you, you have a new hitting coach who comes in and says, hit the ball hard, hit strikes, but we're not seeing them do that. You know, like, so it just really just tells us this is all Brian Cashman's team. This is what, this is why I, I know, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I wanted him out because clearly this is his team and he's building it his way. And it's not working. Yeah. And that that's my biggest issue. We should not be having to sacrifice bunt against the Orioles. You know, like, yeah, it was a good play. You do that against other teams' aces. You do that against Gosman of the Blue Jays. You do that against Chris Sale when we're going against Boston, whoever the heck Tampa Bay wants to throw at us. You do that against them to manufacture some runs. You shouldn't have to be manufacturing runs against the Orioles. That's, <laughs> what, we're, that's what we're doing here. Well, that's the that's what – that's our That's biggest. What it issue. felt like the whole weekend where they, these were practice games for them. All right, let's see how this works. Did they you keep know, doing than, the same thing, right? Like they keep rotating the lineup around. They yeah. shouldn't be resting players. No other this team in baseball training. does this. Yeah, yeah this nobody. Training else. Mentality. Yeah, nobody does this. No other team in baseball does this, except for like Tampa Bay, because Tampa Bay can do whatever the heck they want because it just seems to work for them. But the Yankees keep trying to be the Rays. When we're not in the Rays position, the Rays are doing what they're doing because they don't have the money. They're not a seven billion dollar franchise. The Yankees have to stop trying to be the Rays. We're not them. We have seven. Uh, we're worth seven billion dollars. We have the pockets to get whoever the heck we want, but that's not the case here. What we're doing is every day we're changing the lineup. There's no flow. I actually had to agree with Alex Rodriguez this weekend, which is killing me inside, and because he said that. The changing of the lineup, there's no synergy. You can't get a, a no. thing going here. Look at when we won in 09. You knew what the lineup was every single day unless there was that injury or an off day. But you knew one through six really wasn't changing. 98, 99, you knew what the top That's of the it. order was. Yeah, O'Neill made the same point the other day that I brought up. You know, you didn't need to look at the lineup card when you got to the ballpark. You know, that's, that's the way it needs to be. You know, unless you're giving, unless they're going to give them one day off a week, not every other day off. Which but this is, is what happens when you put together this the line. That it has. You really yeah. look at the body language in the in the dugout. You know, they're not enjoying it. They're not. They don't. There's no life. You know, you're watching Aaron Judge walk around, and he just looks like he wants to be anywhere but where he is. You know, and you know, I I had said the other day. I think not signing that contract is really messing with his head. I think he's regretting it. Well, who do you blame for that? Rather, rather, than, rather than start the season with that monkey off your back, now you're playing with that contract in the front of your head all the time. Who do you blame on that? I'm blaming both parties. I, I, I'm blaming both parties. I, I think they should have been, you know, I know with the lockout, you can't discuss business. But this is something that should have been put in motion two years ago. Right, but that's not Aaron Judge. It's Brian Cashman. Well, Cashman made an offer, and Judge kind of spit on it. So, yeah, but then Cashman turned around and said, well, he's going to air out all the dirty laundry. Like, exactly. You shouldn't Had they just said, we didn't come to an agreement, we'll get back to it in the yeah. offseason, and just left it at that. I'm sure you wouldn't be seeing it. I don't think it's – I mean, Aaron Judge isn't hitting home runs yet. That's really it. The average is still there. He's yeah. still drawing walks. He's going to he's gonna be Aaron Judge. It's just – it's too early to say he's going to have a bad year. But I get what you're trying to say because obviously that's going to be the talking point. He's got this contract hanging over his cat. Every time he strikes out, he's going to think it's because of the contract. But when your GM airs out all the dirty laundry of the negotiations – two hours before first pitch of a new season when you're trying to go win a championship, would you be, a, would you want to go work for that guy every single day? <laughs> like, no, you're going to, but it's, you know, judges. You'd have to be out. a robot for that not to affect you, man. He's aired out his yeah. dirty contract language and he was asked about it right afterwards, right after the game, Aaron Judge had to answer questions about his contract. You'd have to be a robot not to, for that not to affect you. And, and he, and he did kind of say in a very political way, 
that he was surprised that Brian Cashman aired out his dirty laundry, aired out all the contract negotiations. But he said, it's a business. And now Aaron Judge is handling this like a business and not the face of the franchise anymore. And now he realizes the Yankees are playing hardball with me. Is this really the place that I'm going to be for the next seven to 10 years? And now you can probably see it in his face that he's having to, he's having to re- come to that realization. It's not easy, man. Derek Jeter never forgave Brian Cashman for the way they, that Cashman treated him in negotiations. Cashman has to win everything that he enters, whether a, a trade, whether a free agency, whether it contract negotiations, he has to win all of it. And that's not a bad thing for a general manager, but it is if your ego overtakes all of it. Yeah. And that's where Brian Cashman is right now. His ego has overtaken this. He's taken it as a personal affront that Aaron Judge didn't take his 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 uh, contract offer. And to be honest, I mean, if you look at the AAV, that contract offer isn't that great in line with the top end baseball players. They like the Carlos Correa's, and the the, the Souls, and etc. Like that. So you can kind of understand why Aaron Judge rejected it. Now, is it a fair offer? Yes, but again, if you up the AAV, we wouldn't be having this 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 trouble. And he should never ever ever have aired that contract negotiation because that's negotiating in bad faith. And that's why Aaron Judge is pissed off right now. You can see on his face, he doesn't look like the same Aaron Judge. Now he will come round. It's just on the early. Outset is affecting him, of course it is. Yeah, it just, that's on it, Brian Cashman. That's not on both parties. It's all on Brian Cashman. But he looks bored, you know, and you don't want to see that from the guy that's supposed to be a superstar. I don't know about bored. He just looks no, a little he bit. Looks, he, he looks bored. That's, he looks disheartened. Yeah, it's disheartened. I get what you're trying to say, though, Tats, but, like, you, you have to look at it from, from – like, try to put yourself into, like, to your shoes, I guess, like – if your boss, if you were trying to get a raise or something, and then your boss is like, no, and then he tell, and he went and told everybody, hey, this guy wanted a raise, and we're not going to give it to him, and then you still got to go out there and do the job that you're asked to do every single day. I mean, yeah. you're going to go into work being like, man, this place, you know, <laughs> like it's you're going to be a little angry, and you know, I'm you're still going to do your job because you're a professional. Aaron Judge is still going to go out there and try to win baseball games, but one player can't win you a game. In baseball, it's, it's it happens sometimes, but not on a regular basis. So it, it's still – you could see – I get what you're saying, though. I understand what you're saying because when you see every time he makes an out and the way he's looking in the dugout, he's he's frustrated. And you can only point back to it's got to be the contract. Yeah. But he's such a gamer that every time he doesn't do something right – and this is before the contracts, he's pissed at himself. It's just that in years past – you didn't have that contract to go look at and say, this is why he's angry. So now it's just an added thing. And then they're going to keep asking him about it. And they're going to keep tweeting about it and saying, this is what's hanging over his head. And eventually, even to a guy who's been very, very good when it comes to talking to the media, he might get pissed off. He, you know he goes on social media. He's not very active, but you know he's got to be reading it. We talked about this before. That can get to a player. I'm not saying it will get to judge, but it's just he, it's too early for him to say that this is the case because he is going to end up finishing the season. As long as he's on the field, 280, whatever, 40 home runs, hundred plus RBIs, he's going to get around those numbers. He it's will. just, you know, that when Cashman put that information and told them, if you take, if you say, no, I'm airing this out to the public. Like you don't do that, not to your best player. And you want this guy to resign with you. It affected Batantis. It made him go to the Mets. Now mm-hmm. Batantis wasn't very good for the Mets because he ended up getting hurt, but do you want that happening again? <laughs> with the, well, with the it's face looking like it will. <laughs> it could. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's scary because I never would have thought Aaron Judge was leaving. But there's a one guy on this team that's a Yankee lifer. It's him. And then this happened. I'm like, with each passing day, I'm like, why would he want to come back to this? It's, no, it's exactly. As long as Captain Ego is at the top of the helmet, nothing's going to change. You know, if, funny, I were Aaron Judge, if I were Aaron Judge, I'd feel used because – the Yankees used Aaron Judge as an excuse not to sign Trevor Story and Carlos Correa, right? This is prior to them entering into his negotiations, right? They used his looming contract as a reason not to go and get Trevor Story and all yeah. that stuff, right? And Aaron Judge verbally said that he wasn't very happy that Trevor Story is now in Boston. He said, damn, I'm not too, not too happy about that because it's already leaked to several Yankee 
media guys that there were people and the players in the organization uh, and our team that really wanted us to go and make a headline deal because, you know, well, they're trying to win, right? So they don't do that, right? And then Aaron Judge then enters the negotiations and Brian Cashman undercuts him with, I wouldn't say it's a cheap offer, but it's not the best offer you could possibly offer him. And so now, and then then he rejects it because he probably views himself up in the Carlos Correa's for 35 AAVs, right? Okay. And then and then uh, Brian Cashman then um, basically extorts him by uh, airing out all his contract negotiations in public. I would feel used if I were Aaron Judge because they and then and then now the fans reacting against Aaron Judge and that's going to affect Aaron Judge too. Aaron Judge is thinking, oh, Christ, I'm given, you know, I'm, I'm the face of this franchise. And Brian Cashman's made the fans turn against me all because of his own ego. So I, I think that, uh, again, I can't even imagine why you'd even put any of this on Aaron Judge. Brian Cashman has created this whole thing, man. And, and then the, what's the worst thing? And this is something that I've noticed this offseason more than any other offseason. The Yankees are more obsessed with narrative than um, been winning Results. games because, because all I've seen, start of spring training, Hal Steinbrenner comes out talking about you know, uh, having um, bills to pay and bondsmen to pay and stuff like that. So you know, he can't he can't sign people, right? That was on that was at during spring training, right? Now, the day before the season starts, Brian Cashman comes out saying, "Oh, uh, this is the offer that Aaron Judge rejected." Blah 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 blah. Again, all the Yankees are coming out, and none of it is about the team. None of it's about winning. It's all about bills and and failed negotiations and. That's why it's all optics. The optics are not good. And that is why we're not a very good team right now. I think it all affects it. And and to go right back to the original point, uh, I think that this offense would be better if they just had a settled team. And if everybody knew the rules in the lineup, you would get a much more stable situation. Uh, Falafi will hit his singles at the bottom of the order. Um, and I guess you'll get as long as guys just knew their roles. But as long as 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 long as Aaron Boone changes it on a daily basis, and he's having everybody play everywhere else in a crazy, just it's like it's like ping pong balls coming out. Um, that's why there's no consistency. So all of it is this like perfect storm, and that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. Yeah, it's like he's throwing darts at the wall and saying, "Who's my lineup today?" Like that. That's basically what he's doing. And, I mean, the, we get it. There has to be a rotation with some of the infield pieces because you have to get Glaber playing time. You need to get LeMahieu playing time as much as every day possible. Every day he should be in the lineup. But that should be the only thing you're rotating. You know, like you shouldn't have to – one day it's Rizzo leading off, then it's Donaldson, then it's Hicks, and then it's LeMahieu. It's like you can't be doing that and expect your lineup to flow because – it's not throwing off the pitcher clearly because the Baltimore Orioles just shut us down. So you have to, you have to do something here, have a lineup. Oh, hopefully tomorrow they start something, which is, this is asking a lot because apparently Yankees just don't do anything they should do. Have a lineup, the same lineup each day for the series. The only position that really should be changing is catcher because you know, Higgy starting Tuesday. Then you, if he doesn't hit, you put Trevino back out there. And then if he hits, you keep him in there the next day. But have the same lineup, basically, one through eight for the whole series. And if they start hitting, then you got to – if you're Aaron Boone, you say, okay, this is what's working. This is our base. And then we adjust if needed, but based off of this lineup. You can't be having Rizzo lead off one day and say, okay, well, you know, he didn't hit, so we're going to put Donaldson back out there. Those are two guys that should not be leading off at all. Your leadoff hitters on this team are Aaron Hicks and DJ LeMahieu. And maybe IKF if he starts hitting the way that he was last year in terms of getting on base. But that's it. There's no reason that your power bat should be leading off the ball game at oh, sure. all. So you have to have a base. Do something. Your base right now is Aaron Hicks is leading off. Probably Judge batting second. Maybe Rizzo in between him and Stanton. And then you have to have at least that set at the top of the order and then base the rest of it off of matchups and whoever starts at what position. I actually think that Donaldson's at bats collectively, he looked better. He looked more comfortable, not in a leadoff spot last night, you know, yesterday. 
He looked, you know, he looked more like himself. He was putting together better at bats. Hicks, I thought, you know, we, we all we're all waiting for for that one injury to just sideline him for four months. But if he's going to be healthy and getting on base, leave him in the leadoff spot. You know, he had, you know, yeah, he struck out with in a big spot yesterday, but every player strikes out in a big spot. You know, so it's hard to just put it on one person. You know, um, it, it's you're starting to see Trevino and and Falefa at the bottom. They were actually very productive, and then so what do you do the next game? You break up that that duo. It, it, that's not how you manage a game. You be, you know. You know what? I, I don't care what we already agreed on. If this worked today, I think it'll work tomorrow. You know, maybe maybe we have something at the bottom of the lineup for when the, when the lineup flips over. And that's what we talked about, you know, Friday morning on our show. And that's exactly what did not happen. And this was the result of it. So, but the one positive that I, I, I want to – these up, you know, give you a little positivity to the to this to the show was Cortez last yesterday. Oh, oh my God! How lucky are we to have him on this pitching staff? <laughs> he and if you notice, watch how you know. And they pointed out how quick he works. You know, and with their little electronic thing that they got now, whatever the hell they're calling it, and. You can see he's catching the ball. He's turning his. He's already agreeing to the pitch. He's not staring at it, waiting for fifty million, you know, s- signs. And he had them so off balance they weren't able to really get their feet set before he was throwing the ball. You know, and you saw the change in that when they brought in Green, who works a little slower. So, and that's when they started to put some hits together and some good at bats. Maybe this pitch clock thing might be what baseball needs. I mean, I go back to last year. I just I don't get it with Cortez. Like he he should not be pitching this no, well. Like, I it's know. so weird. It's weird that nobody's figured it out yet. Because like I mean, you know what he's doing. He's not throwing very hard, but he's got movement. He's got arm yeah. angles. He's got deception. And yet, this is a guy that got blown up when he pitched for us two years ago or three years ago. <laughs> went to went to Seattle, got annihilated, got let go, and all of a sudden. He's with us and he's pitching like a real ace. He's been our best pitcher the last, you know, year and a half or since back to July last year. He's been our best pitcher. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable. We not we're not getting a ton of length out of him, but from a number five, if that's what your number five is giving you every day, and that's what he's been giving us every day since he's become a starter, that's more than you can ask for. And it's crazy. It's just so weird. And I really think it's the mustache. I mean, what else, what else can be the uh, the, the answer here? It has to be the mustache, right? Because he wasn't pitching like this when he was clean shaven. Now he's got this damn tickler on his face, and he can't be hit. <laughs> it's, it's the mustache. Like, go, go, and keep doing it, Cortez. You're giving people like Bobby Tats a reason to keep it. So yep. stick with the stash. Well, it's, it's not working for Tats, but maybe it's working for Cortez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, I would even have extended him past the fifth inning. Twenty twelve strikeouts. Let him go to the six. Let's see what you got here. I uh, would have seen he probably would have 15 strikeouts up in the sixth inning. I think, uh, he, I think he had over 80 pitches at that point. I think it was more pitch count. I don't care. I'm not interested in pitch count. Stop it. Let, let him pitch because the, the bullpen is going to be absolutely done by the, by the end of next month at this rate with all our pitchers going four innings. Uh, they need to start ramping it up like pronto. And if someone's having an incredible start, let them pitch because there's going to be times where you're not going to have an incredible start. So uh, I, that's the way I've always been. I'm old school. I don't give a frick at this point. If someone's pitching well, let them pitch. So that was my only complaint about yesterday. Pitching wise, I'd a little bit let them go into the next next. Yeah, inning. but just this, this early in the season, you can't play with their health. You, you got you, you know uh, they didn't. It's, uh, you're, you're, no, that, I'm usually right with you. Pitch until your arm falls off. I don't care. You know, it used to be 100 pitches. Nobody even thought about pitch count, you know, when I was watching baseball when I was little. We didn't know what pitch count was. It was you got the ball, you threw it, you know, and it was if you didn't pitch the whole game, that was a disappointment. You know, that that's how old I am. <laughs> you know, so the fact that we did have the short spring training 
there's, there's the first the first round or two through the rotation. If they want to watch the pitch counts, not so much the innings. I'm okay with that. But once once the weather gets a little warmer, they better be getting lengths. Well, yeah, Cortez he, has been given length though for ages, man. He's always been just pitching five in four or five innings. So I would I would yeah. give him a bit more of a chance. He, he was at 88. You could have sent him out for one more. If he has to go 105, I mean it's his second is his second start, second third start, start, whatever. Second start, yeah. You can you can get him over a hundred. Why not? You need to stretch this guy's arm out if you really need him to be a reliable starter down the stretch. If, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to keep doing this, but his track record back to last year is telling you this guy's pretty good, so you should try to use him as much as you can. So if you can get six out of him, I mean, five is fine. On the uh, If you're getting the norm from him as five and you're giving up maybe a run or two, you take it from your number five starter. But if he's pitching like that where he's mm-hmm. just untouchable, the guy had one walk, like <laughs> – three hits, keep him in there. Let him go. Like Your bullpen is going to be overused. And I know we have a ton of bullpen arms, but we saw it last year. Yeah, and to go Tag against, green, my, to go against yeah. my argument and add to yours, it's not like he throws 100 miles an hour. Right. Uh, it, it's, so he's not over-exacerbating his arm, throwing at high velocity. So that, that helps bat. your argument too. His angle mm-hmm. changes every at bat. He's going to yeah. a quick release. He's going to a, a slow. He's got that one thing where he kicks his leg for like 30 seconds. He he changes his delivery every pitch. So it's like if, if anyone that's going to be able to survive another inning, it'd probably be him because he's exactly. not touching that five. So whatever he's doing, it's working. And I think you just have to I would I'm I'm okay with them pulling him. I get what you're saying though, because like second star, it's April. You have the extended bullpen for a reason. Yeah. But we saw that they can, as good as they are, they can have a bad game too. And yesterday they were all bad. So, I mean, oh. it didn't matter anyway because we weren't scoring. So they could have given up 15 runs and wouldn't have mattered. But, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you, when Cortez is pitching like that, you hate wasting because we wasted a Montgomery start the first game of the series. He was brilliant. And even the second game, even though it was rain delayed, Tyone looked good too. And we would have wasted that if not for the rain delay. Thankfully, the rain delay saved us from getting swept. So our pitching has been fine. I'm okay. It's going to have a hiccup. The bullpen. That's gonna why have a it's kind of unfair to Weisinger that he got the heat and, and had to answer all the questions with Lucky Ready in the bullpen. You know, because of old doors at bat, it should have never even gotten to. It, that should have never even been a factor. You know, the Yankees would have put up runs. It changes the dynamic of how you use your pitching. Absolutely. You're right. But we can't score runs against the Orioles. We haven't been able to do it in two, three years now. So, yeah, I, I'll be honest. Uh, I, well, what I'll say on a positive note, Cortez is actually better because my, my ceiling for him was like Ramiro Mendoza. I'm actually willing to rewrite that and say that I think he's actually got a higher ceiling as a starter now. Um, that, that outing yesterday made me think, and, and the fact that he's been great basically <laughs> as soon as he's come back in his second stint. Maybe he's actually not just a spot starter. He's actually probably a legit four or five now at this point. In fact, he's probably been our ace, which is absolutely insane. But uh, yeah, I'm willing to I'm willing to uh, actually change my my thoughts on that. Cortez is terrific, and and I mean, it, you think about Tim Wakefield. He could pitch like 200 pitches, and he'd be exactly the same. He, it, you know, his arm is just rubber arm. And I, I think that's what Cortez has got because he doesn't high throw high velocity. It's all angles and changes and stuff like that. Um, he throws hitters off, and it's the way his windup is awkward as hell. No one knows what he's going to throw one minute to the next. And uh, it's working. So, yeah, I would, I would probably give him another inning or, or two um, each, each time just to, just to see because, um, as you see, if you just manage by numbers – uh, that's it's never going to work because there's going to be times where your pitchers, your bullpen guys, just not going to have a good day. It happens. Loisaga is probably the best reliever in baseball, and he's kind of struggled the last couple of outings. It happens if you only manage by the numbers. So I would, uh, you should need to start managing with uh, with this rather than uh, with this all the time or with by the computer uh, more especially. That's a, that's a no-no in baseball now. Yeah, I know. The, an- but, the, anal- the, the analytic nerds will they'll come after you. No, you can't do uh, that. The analytics say you got to do this. 
Yeah, oh, we're the only team that can't use analytics correctly. Yeah, I've been saying it for, for two years now. We, we use analytics and we use them wrong every single time. So, like, I mean, it, it is what it is. I'm perfectly fine with analytics. I, it works. I know it works. Just we don't use it right. And Brian Cashman continues to say that he's smarter than everybody. It's worked for us in certain aspects with the pitching because Matt Blake's using it mm. and it's working. But if we're using analytics for hitting – we are failing severely to get any production <laughs> from our analytics department. And it's not just the 10 game. If, if we were a really good offense last year and this, and then we started like this, this year, I'd be like, ah, it's no big deal, but we're doing yeah, the same. crap. Yeah. We're doing the same crap we did last year. What do we say last year going into this season? Hit the line drives. I don't care if you're hitting it over the wall, but get the ball elevated. Yep. We're hitting it on the ground again and it's killing rallies left and right. Stop hitting the double plays and maybe you'll score some flipping runs and you won't be losing to the Orioles two games out of three. It, it's crazy. That they become our kryptonite, the Orioles. We can split with the blue Jays. We can take two or three from the Red Sox. Knowing us, we'll probably go and beat Tampa Bay in a three game series, but we can't beat the Orioles. Yeah, this watch, team is watch us sweep Tampa. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Freaking Orioles are kryptonite. It's crazy. That first I mean, Oriole game. It was actually probably the worst game I've watched in, yeah. as long as I can remember in, in, in decades. It was a horribly played baseball game from both sides. I mean, I was, I was watching this thinking, the Orioles are even worse than I could even possibly imagine. Like, they are not even a Major League Baseball team. They are horrific. And yet, what does it say about the Yankees that they're playing at their level? Uh, and I was actually thinking the Orioles deserve to win this game. As, as soon as we reached like the sixth inning, I was thinking Baltimore completely deserve to win this game. The Yankees are playing some of the worst stuff I have ever seen uh, on a baseball field. I'm, you know, like yeah, it's it's if, almost if like in high school. The the coach would be fired, and and the players would be like <laughs> they they start giving it to like they they start like changing. Everything about that that whole high school team, if, if they played like that. I mean, that's how bad the Yankees were. It was garbage. It was not professional ball. It was. You know, it's one of those, the worst, you know, the worst teams in the game are going to have a good weekend and the best teams in the game are going to have a bad weekend. But it can't always be against Baltimore. You know, it, Baltimore can't be able to just, you know, they say the worst team is still going to win 60 games. Well, when 15 of them are against the Yankees, that's really, you know, what does it say against about the Yankee organization? Yeah, you know, that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, you look at Tampa Bay, didn't they beat them 18 times last they, year out of yep. 19? They were so uh, like, 17 of one, I think, last year. Like that's and that's one, insanity. Something. Yeah, you have that. You have to beat Baltimore. We know that the four teams outside of the Orioles are going to fight each other for this division crown. Mm -hmm. What's going to decide it? aside from beating each other, is who has the better record against the freaking Orioles. And we can't beat them. So why did we lose out on the division last year and then lose out in the home wild card game? We couldn't beat Baltimore. So, <laughs> so like, beat the – oh, I'm so sorry, Thomas. Beat the goddamn Orioles. <laughs> we'll be better at the end of the season. It's just This is supposed to be confidence-boosting series. Like you're feeling good, like you said at the beginning of the show. We took two out of three against Boston. We split with Toronto, who's supposed to be so much better than us. We're feeling okay. Yeah, and then we lay you, an egg on <laughs> Yeah, and now we got Detroit coming in, and it's just they're probably gonna have their way with us because the, when this team starts playing down and they're feeling down, it just carries over for like a two week stint. Yeah, so well, hopefully, hopefully they start hitting. Like they need to do it soon because if if and if Garrett Cole gives up another first inning home run, it, it's gonna be it's going to be a fun time on the, on Yankee Twitter. That's for sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> They're already, you know, he needs to Yeah, he's got to at least have, what do you got, two starts so far? And in the first inning in both games, he gave up runs. You know, you got to, if you're an ace of a staff, you have to be, you know, I don't care, you know, the length of the inning, sometimes, you know, it takes an, you know, it takes your, your ace. The first inning, it takes a little longer to settle in. You know, but as long as you're putting up a goose egg, you know, in the first inning, we could, you know, you could live with 20 pitches in the inning. You know, we, we not all, we're not expecting Cole to be able to duplicate what 
Cortez did. How sad is that to say? Throwing an immaculate inning, you know. <laughs> so Cole's got it. Cole's got to deliver. It's if if it's not now, then when? I give Gary, I give Gary, I give Gary Cole a huge, huge margin of error at this point, and I'm you. I'm you know, as you can tell by now, I'm pretty impatient with a lot of things right now with this organization. But Gary Cole, I'm actually surprisingly patient with. Like, I'm, I'd give him a massive margin of error because I, I, I do legitimately think he's awesome. I think he's a terrific pitcher. But I will say, the excuses are running out mm-hmm. fast. And I've been giving him a lot of excuses. I excused the wild card game. I was one of the very few fans that just didn't... That didn't well, we really knew he wasn't healthy. That didn't, yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't really make a big deal out of it. But then... When you go into opening day and then you start screaming and shit like that when, when Billy Crystal's throwing out the opening pitch, I'm thinking, nah, there's a little bit more to this than 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 maybe I'm maybe I'm being overly sympathetic towards him. And then when you read stories about him kind of marching around the locker room and he's picking fights with people, and I'm starting to think, uh, maybe he's actually just a bit of a diva. And and you know, you, then you go into and you go in and making excuses for his his previous start. Oh, you know, these are really good pitches, but Vlad just just hit them into the moon. Maybe I'm being overly sympathetic to him because I'll tell you what, Severino needed no excuses. He just went out and aced out. And then Cortez just went out and aced out. And I'm thinking, you know what? It's time for Garrett Cole to, to start earning his money. And he does need to start pitching like an ace. He's not really pitched like an ace. Well, the last time he pitched like an ace is when he pitched that complete game against Houston. It was, was it how many strikeouts? Was it 17, 18? Um, that was his best outing as a Yankee. Since then, he's kind of gone back to the mean. And he's kind of just been average since then, below average sometimes as well. And he's not started particularly well this year. So it is time. Well, the only positive is at least today they have the off day <laughs> and catch their breath, you know, look back at film, whatever they want to do. You know, on their off day, they got to practice their swings. You know, because something I just don't know what's going to fix this team because I don't see that there's anybody. You don't get the feeling anybody's about to break out. You know, it, it's maybe Donaldson. If you know, if we went now that they took him out of the, you know, they didn't have him in the leadoff spot. You saw he was a little more comfortable. Maybe he starts to put a little more contact on the ball. But the problem is, you know, and it's not even that they're not putting contact, you know, they're not hitting the ball. They're hitting line drives right at everybody, you know, or they're just grinding it out and grinding into double plays after getting, you know, stretching out a long at bat to get to earn a walk. And then the next, the next hitter is swinging at the first pitch, ground out double play, you know, which is what we saw a lot of last year. You know, so I don't know what, what's taking them so long to adjust to, to the new hitting. Rob, I saw your tweet, man. You you wanted to give uh, maybe Florial or possible Peraza a, a call up. Am I right? I want to see Florial. Why do we call the Castro up? And I know uh, Chris from Talking Rival said it's because they want to give him regular at bats, and that's an excuse I've used numerous times, you know, for for prospects. But in this case, Florial has already shown you. Hit. Yeah, you can. You've seen him hit at the major league level. He's a lefty bat. He's got pop. He's already shown that in the, in the minors. He can hit out. He can hit the ball out of Yankee Stadium. He plays fine defensively. He runs the base as well. Why not call him up? If you're going to sit Gallo for Tim Locastro, like we cut Tim Locastro. He got picked up by Boston. And like a week later, they let him go. And then yep. we said, I'll take you back. So why? Like it's because he runs fast. Like it doesn't matter. He made a diving catch yesterday. Great. So did Clint Frazier several times last year. Look what he look what he is. What did he do for us? Nothing. He's with Chicago now. So why don't we just give Floreal a shot? You can have an outfield of Floreal, Hicks, and Judge and DH Stanton if yeah. you don't want to play Gallo. Floreal is a guy that I would like to see him get regular at bats, but it's something that Simonetti said when he we had him on, you know, before the season. He'd be he'd be a perfect platoon center fielder with Aaron Hicks, and you could still rotate the rest of those outfielders around. Mm-hmm. And why are we not letting this this guy get a shot? You know, Peraza, I understand they're not gonna they're not gonna move away from IKF just yet, but why not let Florial play? 
This is what they've been doing to him for three seasons now. They just keep dicking him around. It's annoying because he's done nothing but do well. It going just mean lat. We always saw him for like an at bat in 2020, but last year he played just fine. Every time he was out there, he looked just fine. Even if he wasn't getting a hit, he was seeing the pitch as well. So he looked comfortable. And if you keep sending the guy up and down and not giving him a shot, what are you going to do with him? What are you waiting for? Yeah, Give him a shot. But yeah, we know what Low Castro is. He's a low average hitter who's going to run fast. Who cares? We don't use speed anyway. So let Florial come yeah. up here and do something with it. <laughs> Just let him play. Well, yeah, well, we, what's the point of having Marvin Gonzalez in this, in this roster if you're not going to use him at all? I mean, from what I've heard, they, there's a lot of people outside and other sort and outside the, the Yankee organization that think if you give Marvin Gonzalez extended at bats, he'd actually play to his previous level prior to him getting hurt. Um, I mean, this Tim Castro obsession, I never understood. I didn't think he was particularly good when the Yankees had him last year. Why was why was he the very first signing that we made this year? I, I just didn't make it didn't make uh, really it, any it sense to me. Make any sense? I am. Uh, what I would do is uh, I would 100 percent call up Florio, um, and then he can rotate around the outfield. Um, adds a little bit of youth. I think this team needs a little bit of youth. Needs a little bit of energy, a little bit of athleticism. Give him regular at bats. I mean, you rotate everybody anyway, so what's the problem? And uh, you know what I'd do in June? I'd give Peraza a couple more months in, in AAA. In June, I'd give Peraza um, a shot at shortstop, and he can he can rotate with uh, Falafi. Um, Falafi, for me, is uh, is somebody that you can easily replace at shortstop. Um, Peraza, why not? Give him a shot. If he turns out to be what he's doing in AAA, then it takes the pressure off Volpe, and then you can consider using Volpe in another position when he's ready. But it takes, certainly takes the pressure off him um, at the moment because he's not exactly blowing the cover off the ball right now. So um, the Yankees should be looking at Peraza. Uh, and if you add a little bit of youth, a little bit of energy, that's why I, you know, I got a lot of flack last time I said that. I was wanting to give these kids a chance because – why would running out 36 year olds on their $26 million contracts at the end of their career when you've got a bunch of guys that are primed and ready to go in AAA? I would, I would certainly, I would certainly go that direction because what we're seeing right now is just boring. It's it's horrible to watch. These kids aren't going to be horrible to watch, and all they'll do is give you upside. And uh, you know, even if they struggle, what they're doing is learning, and that's a good thing because yeah, what is the point in sending out this team that's mediocre? That's only going to be mediocre. There's not really much of an upside to 36 year olds when you've got all these kids that are going to give you something. And I'm not saying they're all going to be special, but at least you can learn something about them. And they'll give this energy to the fan base who are upset, who are annoyed. They have to pay a fortune to watch this slop. Uh, I, I mean, New Yorkers are, are they just want to see energy and fight, man. That's all we want to see. If, I'm not overly worried about wins and losses as long as I see fight and good baseball. You know, I you know I always get this this idea that people think that we're spoiled Yankee fans. Okay, we're spoiled to an extent, but we're okay with uh, with with a team that maybe doesn't win a World Series as long as there's fight and heart and excitement. That's what it is. We can energy. Yeah, we can tolerate being outplayed. We can't tolerate being outmatched. I think that's the bat. I think that's the balance. If it was a, a good game where they're like, "Hi," right, they just they just up their game and they they got us. But when you're looking as lifeless as they are against Baltimore, that's when we lose our patience. That's when that that's when you get the negative Yankee fan. You know, the split against Toronto. We were you know when you broke it down. That was just a very well played series on both ends, you know, and we were able, each team was able to take two of the four. You know, yeah, you want to win every game, but you're not going to go 162 and 0. You know, that, that's not realistic. You're going to, you know, the, the, you're going to lose games, but at least lose them trying. You know, you know, you, you know we saw it in the, the Boston series. What do we keep saying? This team is showing fight. You know, when they were down, instead of going, okay, tomorrow's another day, they were trying to battle back. And they were able to take the series. 
you know, that's the mentality that we want from this team, not what they gave us in Baltimore. Baltimore, they took that, they took those games off. Yeah, they punted. Hey. They punted. Yeah. Just like last, just like last year, they punted no. series. They're they're doing one early in the season again. Why is Aaron Judge sitting the first game of the series? Like, you should not be sitting them unless they need. Apps. If they are like hurting, like if Aaron Judge before the game was like, ah, you know, like my leg hurts or something or my side. Okay, let's just let's just err the side of caution here, give him the day off. But if he's ready to go, play him. You know, this is what we were saying. Everybody who should be in the lineup every day needs to play until they absolutely need a day off. Like, it's too early in the season to be giving Aaron Judge a day off. Why? It's why like, are you... who gets who gets the bench? You know, who who becomes the bench player in the outfield? Yeah. It should be Aaron Hicks. But yeah, I know he's been hitting, but or Gallo because Gallo's not hitting. Yeah. And you roll out your best players: Stanton, Hicks, Judge, and. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And then you can DH Donaldson for all I care. I don't know. But if Gallo's not hitting, then you can sit him for a day. But you should not be sitting Aaron Judge when he's actually hitting. Yeah. You know, they sat Gallo. Yeah, exactly. On our best day, three out of our nine cannot hit, right? They're not very good hitters, right, on our very, very best day. So, uh, in no circumstances should Aaron Judge or Giancarlo Stanton or Rizzo or LeMahieu sit at all. Those four need to play every single day unless they're injured or unless they're genuinely tired. Other than that, they need to play every single day and don't rotate them. They all need to be in their place. And then you'll get some consistency out of the lineup. That is what you need to do. Yeah, okay. And the problem- set Aaron Judge on Jackie Robinson Day, just to echo what Scooter said in our live cast. Um, that's a terrible optic for baseball that the face of one of the faces of baseball is sitting on Jackie Robinson Day, but it's it's. But I don't even think that it's the Yankees that shows that. It's a front office. Some nerd upstairs went, "Oh, it's Aaron Judge's day. He needs to sit." Jackie Robinson Day should have been should be something that uh, baseball celebrates, and that should be something that fans can guarantee that your stars are going to play for on that day. It's like Martin Luther King Day for basketball. It's a big thing. You know, you're not going to see LeBron James sitting on Martin Luther King Day. You know what I mean? So it's like, I just think that the Aaron Judge sitting on that on Jackie Robinson Day is a shitty look um, for 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 the for the Yankees and for baseball. Yeah, and then they sat Rizzo yesterday for what? They're off today. Why? Why are we doing this with an off day? This is what I said about Trevino. Like, oh, it's a day game after night game. Who cares? You're off today. And Higgy is playing tomorrow. He's locked into the lineup tomorrow. Why couldn't Trevino play two days in a row when he's hitting? Why are we doing this? They sat Gallo after he was seeing the ball well. That one game clearly has affected him at the plate because even though he wasn't hitting, he was making good contact. You're like, man, he's just like one swing away from that thing going 430 feet into the seats. And then they sat him. So then he gets the day off. He comes back and he's just swinging and missing and everything like he usually does. And now they're sitting Aaron Judge on Jackie Robinson Day. And then you wonder, you know, I'm not saying you, Tats, but people are wondering, why does he look so upset in the dugout? Well, well don't you want to play on that day? Why are you sitting me against the Orioles? <laughs> you know, like, why are you, sitting me? why are you sitting me at all? He should be playing every day. If he's healthy, he's playing every day. Like, you mentioned the names. Who's healthy? Judge, Stanton, LeMahieu, Rizzo, to a degree, Donaldson, I guess. But if they're healthy, that's that's almost, for lack of a better term, that's the problem is nobody's gotten injured yet. So you have too many players to, you know, you have, you know, what, 13 position players for nine spots. You know, and somebody's going to have to sit every day then if you want to have a steady lineup, which means you're going to end up with with Hicks and Torres on the bench every day just going ice cold. You got to do it then. If, if Torres ain't no, hitting I'm anyone. I'm okay with that because Torres isn't doing shit either. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, I said it before. I want Torres to be in the lineup as much as possible. But when he's swinging the bat the way he is and defense is – they keep moving him to short. Again, we, we could talk all day about that. Stop putting him over there because he's clearly not comfortable. But they keep doing it, and they wonder why the guy's struggling. It, another player the Yankees killed. And yep. if, you, if he's not hitting, don't play him. You know, like that's why – this is what we're every freaking day is a different lineup because somebody has to play. Like if DJ has four hits and then 
you sit him the next day because you need to get Torres at bats? How's that going to look? Your best players need to play every day. Ride the hot hand for once. The fact that every single fan says the same thing about the Yankees, that they just don't care about hot streaks. Chris brought it up on Friday. We were talking about who's, you know, oh, Trevino should be playing because he's, you know, he's been hitting well. And she even said, the Yankees don't believe in hot streaks. Nope. Everybody knows this. And, and the Yankees are still trying to make it seem like nobody knows what they're thinking. Every yeah. single <laughs> – every fan, doesn't matter how long they've been watching. If they started watching 100 years ago like Bobby Thatcher, they started watching today. They all know the Yankees don't believe – sorry, Tats. No, no, no. It's... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just freaking play the hot players. Gabagool, this is ridiculous. I'm starting to sound like my father, and it's eating me alive inside. I just – Damn team gives me ulcers. Yep. Well, at least tonight we can't get an ulcer because there's no game tonight. No but sport. T- <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow we will be breaking down the, the, the Detroit series and how they can embarrass themselves this time around. So <laughs> just remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Check us out at sportnetting.com slash player and on Northeast Streaming Sports on Roku. Wear your pinstripes of pride and play hard.